My glasses are filthy. Why are they always filthy? Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today it is my September lookbook and it's another mini one. I have four, four items I can actually show you today and I got five things sewn in September in total. Let's get started with what I'm wearing. This is the border print jumpsuit. <laughs> this was a labour of love. I have filmed a whole like making of section for this one and I'm still trying to work out what angle I put on the video when it goes out because it didn't go perfectly. I ended up with a leaf in a place that just really really bugged me so I ended up recutting out the front leg of the trouser and I'm so glad that I did I think it looks so so much better it was a really small minor point but it was a point that bugged me enough that I knew that if I'd have just persevered and finished the jumpsuit with that leaf in place I would never have worn it because every single time it would have bugged me and it might not have bugged anyone else but it would have bugged me and I was the one wearing it so uh, yeah I recut the jumpsuit front trouser leg and I'm very glad that I did. It didn't take very long to unpick it, it didn't take very long to sew it back in and get this thing finished but when I look back at the footage I started this in July and it's been sat in the naughty corner for quite a long time. So I'm going to film a making of video and hopefully kind of highlight the pieces or the parts where I went wrong and the things that I should have considered when I was cutting out my fabric and I've got whole the beginning of the video is a whole thing of me going you need to be really careful about cutting out your fabric and buy yourself a little bit of extra fabric just in case and I've got a footage of me moving the piece the pattern piece it was in the perfect place and then because I was trying to conserve fabric by cutting the front out on a on the bit at the bottom I moved the track. Ah, oh, never mind. There will be a video. There will be a video. I also made a, another bodice that was going to use the two meter of fabric that I had left over as a pleated and gathered skirt and a very traditional way of using a border print. I still think I'm going to do that because for the pieces of fabric that I have left from recutting the leg and the previous leg of the trousers, I can't see any way of putting a bottom onto that bodice that I've got that I will then like. I think for the price of buying a couple of extra meters of fabric and getting a dress out of it that I think is gorgeous, I think that's worth it rather than trying to fudge something together for the bodice that is nicely made and will look lovely as a dress. So uh, yeah, yeah this one, <laughs> this one started like I say in the middle of July and it's only now just finished and I'm really glad that I've got it finished. It does look lovely. I have put a little bit of weight on so it is not quite sitting perfectly on the butt but I don't mind that and I am back on the keto shtick I've yeah this I've, I've eaten my body weight in digestive chocolate biscuits in the last couple of days and that and that's funnily enough affected affected you know how this fits but it's still comfortable around the waist I can get it done up and I love it the pattern is some trousers that I stole from a Dorothy Perkins jumpsuit many many years ago and the bodice is the by hand London Anna bodice with the boat neckline and yeah I absolutely love it very pleased with this next up we have my little quick project that I did this month this is the Deer and Doe on D which means shower as in shower of rain I the meteorology collection is the knit projects from or the knit patterns from Deer and Doe and they all have kind of either star or meteorological terminology for their names. So this is the On D sweater. I did make a few changes. I did the higher neckline without the collar. The collar would have looked really cute. It's just not my preference. I actually made this pattern up exactly as is a straight size 42 with no alterations. The sleeve and the body were the perfect length for me. I may go back and add like half an inch, maybe an inch of length into the bodice just so that it, because it does sit on my waist as is, but you know, the minute you move, it moves around. I don't dislike that and given how I would wear this with a t-shirt underneath and my tracksuit bottoms or a denim skirt it's not the end of the world but I could possibly go back and lengthen this I'm very pleased with this one the pattern is part of my make nine which you can see up there and was a gift from the very lovely Alex from Gingerhead and Co as was this gorgeous fabric which is little sewing machines 
little vintage sewing machines. I had enough of it left to make an infinity scarf which is something that I do like doing when I have a piece of fabric left like this. This one is 14 inches uh, tall by the width, the full width of the fabric and I've just overlocked it together along the long edge then overlocked it together along the short edge and sewn up the little hole that I left to turn it through. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and it gives me a couple of ways of wearing this. I really like the look of the oversized collar on this but I wouldn't want it all the time but I like that I have the option to either wear it with or without so very pleased with this. This being made means that I have two patterns left on my make nine to get through and one of those is cut out and one of those is slated for next month which you'll be seeing in tomorrow's fabric haul. Next up is the super secret squirrel dress which I can't show you in full yet. The pattern is coming out very very soon and I filmed a twirl of it and I will have put like a quick glimpse of that up for you now and I will be able to show you it in full like I say very very soon but it was something that I'd had cut out from the previous month so beginning of August and I just wanted to get it done and dusted. I'm actually taking this one up with me to Lady McElroy. I'm going to see them on Thursday this week. They're going to be using it as a display piece when they do their shows, I think. It's a straight size 14. I think fits me really, really well and as intended. It's a really pretty dress. It's not my usual style, which is why I'm willingly giving it to them for display purposes. But it is something that styled the right way if I was in the right mood I would wear so I can't wait to show you that one properly but that was the fifth thing or the sorry the fourth thing that I made this month third thing I made this month next up we have the Deer and Doe Hrigolis dress and there is a full making of video of this dress up yep up here I love how this has turned out this bodice looks really really long but it is actually 17 inches long I think what I'm going to do for the next one is take an inch out of this and put it into the waistband because I think I would prefer a slightly thicker waistband I also have lengthened the skirt on this by six inches and it is only just long enough for me because of the nature of it it's not quite a full circle maybe three quarter circle skirt because I lengthened it so much it became too wide for regular fabric so I talk you through splitting or panelling a skirt like that so you can fit it onto the width of fabric that you currently or want to work with. This fabric was from Australia, the very lovely Sandra smuggled it in for me. I bought it, I had it sent to her and then she posted it when she came to visit the UK. It's called Lush Palms, it's no longer available and I'm really sorry I don't have the selvage to give you the full name of it and the designer it did just have a hashtag number and lush palms on it there wasn't a name of a designer and as i said um, it was a spotlight fabric so i don't know if I, I i do think they design their own fabrics as well it's really really pretty i love the bias cut bodice kind of like bringing the they are leaves but they kind of look feather like as well into the center it's the same on the back the skirts are really nice and full and floaty i love the little necktie and the sleeve doodads i have plans to make another one of these the pattern comes with a button front bodice as well which i would like to try i also with the button front bodice want to add on some full bishop sleeves with a contrast cuff keep the sleeve doodads have the sleeves on as well i think that would look really really cute very very similar to this karen millen dress that i have seen and very much fallen in love with obviously that karen millen dress has a zip up the back and a yoke on the skirt but i think this would be a good jumping up off point for the bodice and an inspired by if not an exact replica of the karen millen dress i will make more of these i love it i fully line the bodice because that is my preference i just i just prefer the overall making experience and how it looks rather than having to French seam everything in the bodice and bias bind it. I fully French seamed the skirt and then I made some bias binding out of my remainder little bit of fabric and I've used about five meters of it for the hem of this dress and I have about five meters left to use on something else in the future which I'm really pleased about and the final piece that I've made this month which I think was actually the first thing I made this month is the deer and doe orchid dress the woven deer and doe patterns are named after flowers Uriglis means licorice in English very sorry for my terrible French French 
French pronunciation. Orchid is obviously orchid. So this is a really, really lovely dress. I used some wearable muslin fodder I got from the textile centre. I had six and a half metres of this fabric. I've managed to get this a myosotis and there is about a metre left for mum to make a shirt out of. There is a full making of video up here where I talk you through my decisions on picking the size and any kind of construction deviations that I made. But to be honest, I pretty much stuck to what they told me to do. It's a fully lined dress dress this fabric needed it because of the way that the front bodice is finished I really like that there's a full skirt lining as well because I can hide all the raw edges in here without adding any bulk with bias binding or overlocking I have made a tie because this one is ever so slightly too big for me I don't mind it and I probably would prefer it to be kind of looser in the really really hot months but this is also quite a heavy dress because I used a viscose twill to line it so it's quite a heavy weight lining fabric this that that bodes well for kind of the spring summer but in the very very hot days I probably wouldn't be picking this dress to put on I have also gone through and altered the midriff pieces and only the midriff pieces to make it fit better to me for the next one and there will be a next one because there is gathering along the top of the midriff on the front and also at the back and also gathering in the skirt which means that I can just put more gathers in to fit into the smaller waistband that I have altered. And I also think this is another one that is going to do really really well with a whole bunch of different skirts on it. I think it's going to look lovely with a tiered and gathered skirt on it, a full circle skirt. I like this one but again it's a it's nearly a rectangle and it's kind of not quite quite full enough for my personal preference although it is a lovely dress and you can get it out of three meters and I wouldn't make rule out making another one of these exactly as is if I only had three meters of fabric that I love but we all know that I tend to buy five so it's gonna the majority of these bodices are gonna end up with larger skirts on them there will be more of these bodices in my future because I do really really like it I do like it a lot. This is another one also that I could have a play around with different sleeves on it, but the bodice overall is lovely. I love the little buttons down the front. I went for rouleau loops instead of cord because that's just my preference and also I didn't have any cord in stock. So that was a change that I've made and I will be doing a tutorial about how I get those rouleau loops made, cut out, put down, spaced, and then sewn into the garment because a few of you have asked for that tutorial. But yeah, very happy with this. And as I say, part of my make nine, so I only have two dresses left to make and one of those is already cut out. So I've made five things and I had planned 10. <laughs> two of these weren't things that were in the plans either. So I've actually made three of my planned items from the fabric and sewing plans video that you saw at the beginning of September. It's just been one of those months. I was having a few moments where I was just like, you know what, I when I made the on D, I was like, I don't I don't know what to do today. I the thing that I wanted to do has not gone according to plan. So I just made a really quick video of a really quick project and really enjoyed myself doing it. It was very tongue in cheek, hopefully slightly funny. You guys seem to enjoy it. I've also started on and spent quite a lot of time working on my dressmaker's ball dress. And again, there is a video about that up here. And you'll notice its conspicuous absence in this lookbook. I have put it in the dog bed stuffing bag because just no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Lots of you have pointed out that if I was hand sewing that fabric, it might have behaved better. And you're probably right, but the likelihood of me hand sewing an entire ball gown is minimal and in all honesty, actually non-existent I wasn't going to do that I just did not like how it was coming out I have other things in my wardrobe that are nicer to wear unfortunately I tried one of those other things on and broke the zip on it so this needs to be repaired but I have put up a vote for the 8997 or the Magnolia dress the Magnolia has won by a landslide and is what I'm going to be wearing to the dressmakers ball and I'm really looking forward to it because it was designed and sewn and intended to be worn for that kind of an event. At some point at one of these events in the future I will make a properly elaborate ball gown to wear and it will be awesome and live up to my expectations and I think what I need to do is just start making it next year rather than leaving it for a specific date and then having, I mean I, I gave myself 10 days to make the dress and I could have done it just don't think I would have liked, I, di I, I didn't have time for plan B when it all went horribly wrong. 
basically. So next time I'm going to just make a dress for the sake of making a dress and making a video out of it and enjoying the process and then having it to wear to a ball eventually that's the thing <laughs> we shall see so that is everything i made this month and overall i'm happy i i'm sad that i didn't get to my five projects from one pattern video but that's the first thing i'm going to start working on when i get back from the dressmakers ball we are leaving tomorrow very excited so yeah the first thing i'm going to start working on when i get back is my five five my five looks from one pattern video and i've also got a shirt to make as well it's going to be awesome and I'm, i am looking forward to those projects very much so i've also got my dear and die maya sotis dress out of the same fabric as the orchid dress and it's going to be wildly inappropriate when it gets finished in the middle of october but never mind i'll wear it next year i think i think i'm gonna like it the maya sotis is definitely a risk for me which is why i think i keep putting it off We'll get there eventually it'll be fine so let me know in the comments section down below which of the four things that you've seen today is your favorite i am not sure that i could play favorites but i'm very glad that this jumpsuit has finally been finished finally so so happy that it's finally done like i say i think i will be buying more of the fabric to finish off the other bodice to make a dress because i think it's what i've got in my head and we all know how stubborn i can be so yeah i think that's what i'm gonna do but i would be really interested to hear out of the four things that you have seen today which is your favorite so i hope you've enjoyed today's video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and i'll see you again very soon bye <laughs>